world. So guess who's back and filming videos again? Apparently us. We haven't done this in like two weeks, so excuse us if we sound a little off. Uh, it's yeah, it's been a long, and we'll explain kind of why the offness uh, with the two things. But for now, we've got a really uh, roughly largeish haul as for July usual. with a teeny bit of August. With a teeny bit of August, so that's yeah. fine too. So yeah, without further ado. I adieu, guess we're going to start adieu. with the stuff that we got from people at publishing houses because we're very, very lucky and we get a lot of things. Uh, first is a romance book. It's called A Duke by Default and it's by Alyssa Cole. I actually haven't read the other books in this series, but I have heard such great things about them and I have no idea what the story is, but I'm just going to trust everyone who told me I should give this series a shot. Hooray. Next we have... <laughs> This cover just made me laugh when I first saw it. It says, We regret to inform you, An Overachiever's Guide to College Rejection by oh, Elliot Kaplan. I'm That's pretty terrible. sure this is the one where like she thinks that she's gonna like get into all the schools she applied to and then she ends up getting into none of them. Uh, which is terrible. terrible. And I can only imagine how she feels. And I think she sort of learned something from that. But yeah, that, that's what this one is about. Fair. Sorry, I forgot to mention. This one is from Avon Romance and this one is from Alfred A. Nuff. Nuff books. Who also did Aragon, I think. Did they? Yeah, I think so. Uh, next we have, ooh, next we have All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. I've never read any of her books, but uh, this also came with a signed book plate. And this is a love story, which is unsurprising, and it's about two people who meet and they have this perfect beginning, but then they end up getting separated and then they meet again seven years later. So, came that should be interesting. Yes. Then we have Inventing Victoria by Tanya Bolded. This is a Bloomsbury book. Um, it's a historical, it's a historical fiction story about a black girl's self-discovery during the Reconstruction era in the United States, which I don't actually know that much about. So this should be an interesting read for me. And last is something that I need to watch the film for. That's why I actually got the book. Uh, it's a yeah. Down a Dark Hall by Louise Duncan, and this is basically about a sure it's a school like a boarding school and then if there's rumors that it's haunted but then her like the girl who is the main character she suddenly starts seeing her classmates develop strange and unusual talents and uh, things kind of go downhill from there so I'm gonna be reading this and we're gonna be watching the film and that review is gonna go up on the blog and at some point in a what we read so yeah those are all the things I picked up from publishers last month uh, we got a couple of other uh, books oh, my way as well um, so one of them is uh, Resistance. Uh, I think it's one of those, um, it, it, it's a story by a young girl who was based in uh, Nazi-occupied Poland and they were trying to, you know, bring some, uh, some of the Jews who helped them escape at that particular point in time. We actually got an arc of this, uh, well I actually got, an, got an arc, arc of this at the BAA. Looking forward to reading the rest of this. And this next book is called G The Game of the Gods. Um, it's uh, the A-Team and X-Men in an exotic futuristic setting, a great adventure with many layers. Though I did not watch the original A-Team with Mr. T. I, I think that was it. I did watch the cartoon, I think, as a kid. Obviously, I'm a huge X-Men fan, uh, so Sounds looking forward like to it. this kind of uh, kind of sci-fi uh, action-ish. -ish. Sounds like it's Sorry. right up his alley. Yeah, sci-fi action-ish uh, book. So I think that, that ends the kind of adult review section you got. Yeah. Uh, okay, so my next section are get, bleh, bleh. my next section are books that I either bought or got as presents from other people. So first is a book that I bought. It's called The Mermaid by Christina Henry, and mostly I'm gonna admit it, I bought it for the cover because it's got a mermaid tail in. I know nothing about this story. I'll be honest. I just wanted it for the cover. Next is a finished copy of a book that I read and really enjoyed, and that is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. And yes, this is the UK edition. I got this one because I wanted it to match with my Uprooted, which is also the UK edition. This is one that I've actually talked about in, I think, last week's What We Read. Uh, it's basically a fairy tale esque kind of story about a woman who decides to take over her father's money lending business and makes a success out of herself. So much so that a magical race of creatures known as the Stark find out about her ability and want her to turn silver into gold. And there are a lot of other plot points, but that is the main one. And it's really, really good. Next, this is actually a book that I got a couple of months ago and I finally found it again. It disappeared for like three months. Um, a friend of mine, Sam from the Philippines, she brought me a physical copy of Bucket List to Love by C.P. Sandy. It is a Filipino contemporary romance written by a Filipino author. Um, and it is set in Japan and that's all I really needed to know about it to want to read it. 
Next we have a book that was given to me uh, by my friend DJ and it's How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. I have actually read another book from this author, I'm pretty sure, let me just make sure. Yes. I've actually read another book by this author called Happiness for Beginners which I really liked because it was the story of a woman who was trying to recover from something traumatic and she did so when she, went, when she uh, embarked on a hike. I actually have no idea what this one is about but I am looking forward to reading it. Then we have a book that DJ also gave me and he really liked and it's The Girl He Used to Know by Tracy Garvis Graves. Haven't read anything by this author, to be honest, but I know Rachel and DJ both really love her and DJ really enjoyed this one, so I'm really looking forward to checking it out. It's contemporary women's fiction and I honestly have no idea what it's about. <laughs> There's a pattern to this video. <laughs> um, also, presents, so I got some birthday presents. Uh, DJ gave me this little uh, book that says 642 tiny things to write about. And then he also gave me a book called Steering the Craft, A 21st Century Guide to Sailing the Sea of Story by Ursula K. Le Guin. So uh, DJ and I often joke that someday we'll both be published authors and we'll go on tour together. Hopefully it's not actually a joke and it actually happened, so um, meant to be motivated. Uh, I also got a gift from my friend Shannon. She got me a physical copy of The Falconer by Elizabeth May. Thanks, All I know about this one is that it has Scottish influences on the story. There's Faye in it, and Kristen over at Super Space Chick really enjoyed it. I kind of so. want to read it. Can't wait. Um, in last month's Alcrate, the theme was Strange and Eerie, or Strange and Paranormal, I can't remember. Uh, but this is the Alcrate exclusive edition of My Plain Jane. I've talked about this book before, but basically it is a fantastically funny take on Jane Eyre. And the main characters in this one are Jane Eyre, Charlotte Bronte, who is the author of Jane Eyre, uh -huh. and a original character named Alexander Blackwood. And it's basically Jane Eyre, but with ghosts and ghost hunters. And it's so flippin' amazing. And then I have two books that my friend Emily gave me. So first is The Wicked Deep by Cher Earnshaw. I know Kristen from Super Space Chick like this, and I know DJ also recently read it and loved it. It's basically a witch story. That's, that's all I really know about it. Ooh. Also, pretty sure this is one, yeah. It has the most beautiful like print on the hardcover. I am so excited. And then we have a finished copy of This Mortal Coil by Emily Suvada. Maki actually has this one and hasn't read it. <laughs> um, it's science fiction, but it's uh, it's a kind of science fiction where there is a what do you call it? A sort of like body transplant. Yeah. No, no I think it's it um it's a infectious disease. That kind of that kind of a story. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's um it's science fiction that's about genetics and modifying genetics. And I know Kristen from Super Space Chick really enjoyed it and I want to read this because I also want to read the second book which is coming out this year. And that's it for my quick call and someone just stole a book from me behind my back. I'm sure you guys caught it. <laughs> a couple of middle grade uh, books that came in the mail. Uh, one of which is a copy of the Unicorn Quest um, which is ca called Secret in the Stone. I really, really love the first book because it was about two sisters who uh, discovered that there was a portal to another world through their attic chimney. Amazing! You have to go up to the attic and you have to climb up the chimney and then you emerge into a, from out of a well into another world where unicorns don't exist anymore or do they? And then this is book two from that series so I just really, really love this. The sisters are struggling through their own personal lives and which would have been dramatic by themselves uh, in the real, real world, but they bring that drama over to the other world, so I think I just really should read this already. And the other book that we got is The Girl with a Dragon Heart, which is apparently a companion novel to the Dragon with a Chocolate Heart series. Apparently it's filled with girl power and chocolate, which... I think you're gonna enjoy that. Who wouldn't love girl power and chocolate? I, I, it's mostly the chocolate, but I mean, I appreciate like, you know, the girl, girl power, power but, but... but chocolate though. It's like, so that's on, and then, and this particular tale is about a, a girl who, whose best friend is a like a dragon turned girl, and uh, um, she's that's kind of amazing. Yeah, and, and she feels like I feel like they didn't have a choice in that, so I kind of <laughs> like, like they didn't. So I kind of want to read the Chocolate Hearted Dragon first before kind of reading this, just so yeah. I understand what's going on, or maybe it's a standalone and it's awesome the way Dragon Watch is a standalone that's for Fable Haven. To... It's always fun to try. So that's that for that mini. Intermission. What and else have you got, Lex? We are in a uh, very, very. <laughs> are we moving on to the printed page in terms of drawings and colors and yes. words? And Last month, um, I may have gone a little manga crazy. Kristen and I were shopping the buy two get one free sale for Viz Media on Barnes and Noble last month. Um, I will show you the two that weren't related to that sale because I got them later on, also with some discount because 
apparently that's how I roll. Um, I have the two gigantic volumes of Chobits. Uh, Kristen told me I should read it because she knows I love Clamp in general. And the story of this one is that the main character finds a personal computer that is in this world in the, the form of a human. Yeah, in this world they're called Persicoms. They're yeah. androids that look like that. They look like this. Yeah, right. and they're kind of beautiful. yeah. And basically, it just explores their relationship and what it means to have that sort of relationship since she's in it computer and he's a human. Yeah, it's very kind of sci-fi romance, you know, am I self-aware now that it's so yeah, there's that. Uh, okay, and now every single other thing was definitely part of that sale. The main reason that I went a little crazy on the sale is because I wanted to get all the volumes of a specific series, manga series um, that are out and all the volumes, indeed, I got. <laughs> Ta-da! Um, it is my newest favorite anime, Yo No The Dawn, so I have volume mine one too. and two. All the, way, all the way, all the way to 12, to 12 basically, um, and technically volumes one to eight are all like covered in the anime series, which we have watched and obsessed with, and we're still kind of mad that there's no because we direct we, sequel we, to it. We stumbled upon it on Crunchyroll, thinking, hey, this looks like a really cool series. It's it was set in sort of like an ancient medieval yes. kind of Eastern type amalgam of mm -hmm. everything Eastern, so it's got Japanese, Korean. Okay. Uh, a tiny bits of Chinese elements into it, and it centers around a young girl Yona who like uh, gonna was going this. to. I, I love it too. I did. Yeah. The story was, and it was so compelling because it's about a young girl who had his, who had a childhood friend who she had a crush on for the longest time, but then terrible, terrible things happened that put them on different sides, and now she and her other childhood friend that, that they grew up with, which is sort of their captain of the guards, have to you know spare her away from the castle and and find what the legendary four dragon companions to help her reclaim, help her, reclaim, her, kingdom. Re reclaim her kingdom because it's so good. It's it's really, really it's good. So yeah. good. And um, we, we need, we need stalker. more. Stalker. We need more. Okay, uh, the rest of my purchases are all first volumes in series that I was either really curious about, and trust me, I narrowed this down already. Like, it's a lot, but I still narrowed this down. There were way more in my cart. Somebody enjoyed their birthday money. <laughs> so first is Happy Marriage. This one is by Maki and, and Joji. And it's basically about a girl who ends up in an arranged marriage to like the, su the son of the company's president, I think. And obviously it explores their relationship and how something develops from that. Me and my fluffy manga, apparently. Um, next Ooh, is I think I want to read this We one. Were There. It's by Yuki Obata. And it's about a girl who falls in love with this guy who is still in love with his, I think, pretty sure dead ex-girlfriend who died like the year before. Yeah, okay, I'm not reading that. <laughs> Staying away. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, next is one that I've actually wanted for a while. I don't, like I've never ended up buying it, but then I was like, no, I should get it now while I can get it for cheap or free. Um, and it's Kiss of the Rose Princess by Aya Shu. I don't know to say that. Shumoto? Shumoto? Shumoto. You say it better than me. Uh, Assuming it's here. Fantasy, romance type thing. There are strange situations in this one, so let, let's see what How I How strange? Like. Manga, it has a huge... She basically has this choker and it's she's never supposed to lose it or, you know, have it taken off. And then one day it falls off when a bat-like creature falls out of the sky on her. And so. what happens when it comes off? I just, just about anything can happen. It's this, manga. This creature that falls on her, so the choker's off, right? Um, I don't, they don't, they don't say in the summary what happens, but <laughs> the creature gives her four cards and it's for four knights and she is supposed to be able to summon them with a kiss. Yeah. Knights, like, oh, I thought you like four knights, like... Nights four nights, like night. a hotel like reservation? Oh, like four nights, like... I'm sorry, it's like... T t planning vacations, it puts uh, you in the mood. Hanakimi, Hanakimi classic. by Hisaya Nakajo. And the entire story is that there's this girl who falls in love with this track star and then she decides to transfer to his all-male boarding school and disguise herself as a boy so she can be his roommate. And there's actually a live action of this. Yeah, there's also a Korean version of this, which I actually watch and love. There you go. This one I got just because of the title, because come on. I think I the Water Dragon's this. Bride, which is by Rei Toma, and it just looks so cute. It, it's another Castelli. one of the stories where like a girl from modern day is whisked away into some other world. I kind of want to read this. Okay, you can hold on to it. And the last one is actually one that I actually saw as an anime first, but then I got curious about the manga. So it's The Demon Prince of Momochi House by I Ah, but Aya Shoto also. Um, and basically the main character inherits an ancient ancestral estate that she's never seen before and it turns out that it's a barrier between the human and the spiritual realms and she's supposed to be the guardian between the two I worlds. like that. So, gonna read that. That's pretty cool. Uh, the last two that I'm gonna share are actually 
gifts or pre-orders, which I forgot to mention earlier. So first is the first volume of Wotakoi, which was from Kristen. This was her one part of her birthday present to me, and you guys know I love Wotakoi. I talked about it in our anime video, which I will link to. It's it's just so good. It's about a group of people who work at the same company, and at work they all try to pretend that they're you know normal corporate worker bees and then it turns out in real life they're all otaku obsessive sort. otakus uh, the girl is I'm pretty sure yaoi <laughs> that, that. <laughs> she's she's definitely a fujoshi yeah. that's for she's sure she's a fujoshi the, uh, what, the other one cosplays the other one's a gamer I don't remember I think the other and, one's and manga just, and just the it's geeky just, dynamic between all of so them it's so good I enjoyed so much I need season 2 already like I need it especially after the last episode I'm sure it's even more nuanced for anyone who actually lives in Japan and understands the culture and mm. how these for are us, so, so counterculture for, but you don't have to know that to appreciate this so it's really cool and guess what I forgot actually that I pre-ordered Fruits Basket Another by Natsuki Takaya this is the second like it's a, it's not even related to the first one but it's the same sort of concept world? where there's a girl who, yeah. It's the same world. Yeah. Oh wow. She. It's the same thing. She. It's like a spinoff. Yeah. Sweet. She. She. This is this girl is a high school student and she basically ends up running in to Somoclan members oh. again. Oh. So it's Which you know, part of the reason I want to read it is because I really enjoyed Fruits Basket, but also the second part is because I really am dying to see like the characters I love so much again. in this world yeah. because like. A different angle. That's awesome. Can't wait. And that's it for my manga haul. Awesome. Now for my comics haul, we were exhausted from coming from for one day oh, uh, yes. to Boston Comic Con uh, yesterday. Uh, which we so we're filming it today, uh, the, the day after, um, because Catherine Tate was there, and Catherine why not Tate! pay homage to the Doctor Donna? Uh, for those of you who troll Alexa's Instagram, you've probably seen us in our Hoovianess, uh and how just all smiles when we pose with our favorite um, companions and doctors. We took a selfie with each took of us. A I mean, selfie come with on. Catherine Tate was awesome. I mean, you could tell that even if she'd been there kind of you know all day, and, and she but she was just so gracious to all of the fans. Um, in and around that, we were managed to shop for some really great comics. I want to start with Batgirl Volume 1, Stephanie Brown Batgirl. So this is the blonde one. Yes, who, who saw it. And Alexa saw it and spotted it. I had to get it. It covers Volumes 1 to 12, which is half the arc. It only ran for about 24 issues. Oh, but, that's um, great. Then we're only missing Yeah, and, and, this was the, and she was the last Batgirl before they did the whole New 52, mm -hmm. where Stephanie disappeared for a really, really long time until Rebirth, I think, when she's finally back in purple yet again. I recommend this because it pays a lot of homage to the old Batgirl and it draws a lot of parallelisms to Barbara, okay. who on her own, for her own reasons, you know, wanted to say, you know, I could fight crime too and, and I don't need to be a Wayne <laughs> to do it. Uh, though the Waynes obviously, you know, deck her out. The other one would be uh, Alias for $7. Uh, volume 1, so this is Alias Investigations. Notice the very, very old covers. This is Marvel Max, you see the little see Max right there. at the top. This is Jess. This is her, this is what the what, what the Jessica Jones Netflix series is based af after. And it's a very, Marvel Max was, it's kind of a, an imprint within Marvel that published uh, stories in the same universe, but are like X R rated, like, mm. you know, themes and just the violence and the gore and the, and the well, sex. Well, not shocking considering, considering this is Alias. This is Alias, right? And so Jessica is, this is her story and Brian Michael Bendis wrote it. A lot of people love Brian Michael Bendis and uh, really, really appreciate it, appreciative of that. And then for, I think this is more Alexis, you want to show them our sure. comic haul? Um, when I saw this, I was like, we should probably get it. It's Gotham Academy, the second semester, volume one. Welcome back. I still haven't read volume three. Um, got it for a really good price. I really enjoyed the first two volumes of this. I just enjoy the fact that it's set in a world that I'm so familiar with and there are appearances by certain people that made me very, very happy. Um, but the story itself and the characters are very lovable and I'm excited to return to it. And the crowning achievement of that entire series, which I think rounds off my collection beautifully, beautifully, would be uh, the hardbound uh, graphic novel for the Battle of Jericho Hill from the Dark, Dark Tower uh, uh, graphic novel series. Free dollars! Why is this so important? Because for those of you who have read the Dark Tower or kind of want to get into it, it starts off in a kind of post-dystopian weird halfway world between our world and another one, uh, sending on a gunslinger named Roland Deschain. Uh, Roland, Roland, my f friend, my the friend of mine, the JC who got me into this, calls him Roland. I think it's cooler to call him Roland, but I think 
Steven can cause a Roland. Who knows? Which is fine. Uh, but he's a gunslinger, the very last of his kind. And in his story, you will, you know, you will, he'll allude to how it came to be that he was the final one. This was that battle. It was never explained in the books. It was only alluded oh, to. Oh, that's cool. And with the, with the graphic novel started out with a very young uh, Roland. Uh, and his adventures and misadventures and the greatest love of his life and then which was explored in book four that that loves that terrible terrible tragic love story but then the, what happened between then and the gunslinger was battle of jericho hill and this was the most depressing terrifying insane like twist to the entire story and um it was terrible it's beautiful and i love that it's finally part of my life before i go into my digital comics haul this is a great segue to that because alexa has something that she'd received uh, as a birthday present, something very important to us, and it is... Um, so I said earlier that Kristen had given me a manga, but she had also given me a copy of the library edition of The Search, which is part of the Avatar The Last Airbender comics. For and those of you who don't know what this is about, this is the tale that tells you what happened to Zuko's, to Zuko's mom. mom. Now, we don't want to, for those of you who have not had the pleasure, which you should take it, by the way, of watching the entire series... Do one it! Of not too spoilery, but one of the unfinished kind of threads that weren't, weren't relevant to the actual main storyline was what happened to the fire, uh, the, yeah. the fire prince's, you know, mom. This is the story that sort of tells it's you. It's so good. It's, it's set after the events of Avatar: The Last Airbender, and we highly recommend this thing. I highly recommend the series. We highly recommend anything Avatar: The Last. If it's Avatar: The Last Airbender. Oh my god! Did you see that they announced the car comic? Yes, story? they did. Yes, they did. It's all pretty lovely. Do you and see how much I love it? Like, I love this library edition so much. She loves the library edition. I actually have the digital graphic uh, novel edition because Comixology went on a massive sale. Dark Horse. Uh, right? Specifically for Dark Horse, and so I managed Viz to Media get. Media Dark Horse. Pulling through, man. I know. I managed to get all 17 mini volumes because yeah. the search is actually divided into four volumes, and a lot of their big arcs are divided into four. And I got like 17, well, actually 16 I've read uh, most of those comics, books. specifically uh, um, North and South, North and South, which was the most recent one that they come out. Yeah. Um, Lost the Lost Adventures, Adventures The Promise, uh, and the then The Search, this one. The Rift. Uh, we'll flush it all there anyway. And smoke, smoke and Shadow, and shadow yeah. which is really, really cool, kind of cool, because the, a lot of that stuff had to do with the, with the Zuko and, and everything. So but we are so excited to more read all Avatar, these comics. More Avatar, more Team um, more Because they went like, on a massive sale, like these, literally almost like you only had to pay like 37% of everything that, that, that it would have cost crazy. you, which is nuts. In which case, I kind of went insane and bought the entire Lock and Key series. Well, you had to because you really like them. Because I really love the first one. 300, I bought the first, yeah, yeah th uh, 300, which was... Uh, which just turned into a movie. Uh, Gerard Butler, uh, which was, I feel, one of the most... Uh, uh, well done. Well done and faithful to the printed media really? I've never read movies ever. Because even the framing, even the, the cinematography, you, you'll see the exact same thing in the comics. Mm. Which makes it beautiful because the visuals in, in, in 300 really cool, are really great. Part of the sale that I got would be the Jeff Johns run of the Teen Titans, volumes 1 and 2. Uh, which I think is really, really lovely. Um, I got Teen Titans A Celebration of 50 Years. The three brightest day books. Uh, Green Lantern book one, which is pretty much, again, I believe this is also uh, Jeff Johns. I think Jeff Johns really just touches is awesome. Um, and it was the Blackest Night Green Lantern se uh, series. The one oh, with sorry. all of the different lanterns? Yeah, it, so it sort of runs companion to the actual Blackest, Blackest Night, Night series, which I, which I had to get as well. We own it, we, actually. And I want to bring it with me wherever I go. Um, Two adventure comics, very important because this shows the return of Connor Kent after he had died. Issue two I had to get because, you know, he had a floaty date with Cassie. Um, and then it, it, it's the thing with, I anyway. know, I know. And then issue three would be him meeting up with Tim post, you know, Batman's death at this time because Batman had died. Uh, and them having to sort through how, in a moment of uh, complete weakness, um, Tim and Cassie exchanged a kiss of grief, out of grief and, and comfort, when Connor had died. And now that he's back, kind of makes it awkward. awkward. So if you're a superhero, um, don't do things just because somebody died. They could be back in a few years. Robin War, uh, I, I, also, also, I also got. And then I believe the crowning um, uh, achievement of this entire thing would be the Grant Morrison run of Batman and Robin. This is just after Bruce had died. Alexa has to read this, and that is yeah. when Damien finally assumes the mantle of Robin, and Dick finally assumes the mantle of Batman. So that is very, very cool, and ends my Digital Comics Madness haul. So the very last section of this video is going to be a Darkest Mind section. 
If you didn't know, the movie came out two weeks ago. Um, it was really fun. It's an interesting take on the book. There are a lot of different changes to it, but I still thought it was really fun to watch. Um, and uh, I got a few packages that I need to share. So there is an orange side package and it says, Lose your mind. Which I now understand why it's lose your mind because oranges are kind of like telepaths. Yes. So there's popcorn in here, which you're probably eat now. I should want to eat this popcorn. There's like right this little now. fanny pack that has the darkest mind symbols on it, which is amazing. Um, we had Sour Patch Kids and Cookie Dough Bites. Because these were supposed to be the things that you would have taken to the Darkest Minds movie yes. premiere. Um, I still have a gift card, so I'm going to watch that. And um, tote bag for the Darkest Minds. Carpet the hell out of this DM, it says. This oh, is going to be... Speaking part of, of a giveaway because we actually have this already. So. Speaking of cinnamon rolls. Ah, oh, Liam Stewart is an amazing cinnamon roll. You know it. I know it. You start eating the popcorn. So we should eat it now. Bye bye. And then the next three things are all related to the latest book that came out in the Darkest Mind series, The Darkest Legacy. This book is Zoo's story and it's set five book. years after the first series. And Zoo is basically being framed for a crime and she has to figure out who is framing her and also uncovers along the way that there's something much bigger going on. So, I have a Walmart version of the book. Um, this has an annotated chapter right there at the back. Ta-da! Um, it's annotated by Alex, I don't know if you can see that. It's really cute, like she drew all over it and she has things written on it. And it's very clever and very creative. Um, and then it's also signed, actually. Ta-da! Um, next, we have a box that I was sent. It's the yellow one. It says, it says go away, I'm reading. Tell me my one stop. <laughs> I got another box. This one says, go away, I'm reading. Uh, uh, it has a finished copy of The Darkest Legacy, which is my giveaway on Twitter. Still have to pick a winner. I swear it's happening. By the time this video goes up, it's probably going to happen. Um, we have these really cute socks that also say go away I'm reading at the bottom there with the size symbol um, and the darkest legacy at the top. Got this amazing light bulb. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Light, light tumbler? bulb tumbler. Fine. Light bulb tumbler, which if you know what Zoo's ability is, then makes sense. I kind of want it. It's mine though. I didn't say I was going to take it. Uh, there's another light bulb in here. This time it has candy in it. That you can have. And As though I could give it. That's right. But we're not done yet. Good Choice Reading actually did a special box for The Darkest Legacy and it says, I don't want to be your stranger. It was a great moment. So it has this pouch inside, also says, I don't want to be your stranger. Um, and inside that, there is a sticker. There is the pin with Zoo on it, which is amazing. And there's this tree. Um, yeah, the pouch is really good, by the way, because it's like soft cloth and like the inside is padded. Um, there is, I'm pretty sure this is a card. It says, if they wouldn't see us as human, we'd make sure they understood we were something more. Oh yeah, that was a great quote. Which is amazing. Because Zoo is a, such a different character growing up that I just love the sassy girl. And this is the finished copy of The Darkest Legacy that I'm keeping because it is signed and personalized to me. So yeah, it was a great box. I'm glad I got it. Um, all these goodies were amazing. And that is the end of our book haul from July and a little bit of August. We hope you enjoyed seeing all of the books that we got and as much as Mackie's enjoying this popcorn. <laughs> if you guys got anything new that you are excited about for the month of July, or maybe a little bit of August, we would love to know. And if you're interested in seeing our thoughts in any of the things we showed, whether it's the manga, the comics, the books. Happy to chat. We are like, happy fun. to talk about it. Uh, and we'll see you guys for our next video very soon. Bye!